Before we begin, I have a very important announcement to bring to your attention. My live show, tickets on sale at various places. So go check that out. Have yourself a nice time and get some dinner afterwards or whatever you people do. And then the other thing you should also pay attention to is David McBride is doing a show of his own, of sorts, in the court system. And he needs your help. That's right. When do you do anything for vets? Now it's time for you to show some damn patriotism to him because God damn he needs that money. And you might also be wondering why aren't we talking about orcas? Well, it's because this video was filmed several months before. That's why I need to put in all those updates. Sorry to spoil the magic. Ooh, now. Let's just bring the magic back with some really crap effects to go into the video. I'm gonna come out and finally say it. I know I'm gonna cop some blowback for this. I know a lot of you don't like the guy, but it has to be said, I completely and 100% utterly agree with Tucker Carlson on this one. M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. Until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. Sorry, wrong video. Still do agree. What a dull, joyless world we live in now that I can't get off to M&Ms and I'm stuck with yaoi chocolates. I guess they're kind of thick. But there's another thing I agree with Tucker on, apart from, you know, the great replacement theory. You know, the theory that all sexy mascots are gonna be replaced with solar sterile unique mascots. And it's this. Two years ago, June, 2019, the federal police in Sydney raided the offices of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, that's the state broadcaster, ABC. They weren't at all unclear about why they were raiding the offices. They said it out loud. Just days before the raid, ABC broadcast allegations from a whistleblower that embarrassed the government of Australia. This whistleblower said that Australia's military leaders had killed civilians in Afghanistan, including children, and had lied about it. The ABC broadcast that story. It wasn't a crime to broadcast the story, and Australia's federal police didn't pretend it was. Instead, they served the broadcaster with a warrant that authorized them the police to cover up any evidence of the Australian military's misconduct. Think about that for a minute. The warrant, and we're quoting it, allowed police to quote, add, copy, delete, or alter any material they wanted to alter on the broadcaster's computer. That's not the kind of thing that happens in a free country. Bit of an anti-climax, right? You were expecting something worse than the Eminem thing. And I know it's just Australia prosecuting a veteran exposing war crimes, but hear me out. Good evening and welcome to Friendly Geordies tonight. Australia is a country most of you have probably never heard of. In fact, it's probably most famed for being the birthplace of supposed conservative former governor of California, now turncoat crazed liberal Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, the star of such kick-ass blockbusters as Terminator, Predator. Anyway, the whistleblower Tucker Carlson's talking about is a man called David McBride, and I've made many a video before about McBride. Watch them here. To be honest, I'm getting pretty sick of making videos about him. That's right, David, I'm bored of your story. Get some new arcs, bro. That's why this one's more of a message to the federal government. Please let me move on to making more different fire content. Instead of rehashing the story of a hero that's being martyred by the government he served. In case you haven't watched my videos on him, David McBride was an Australian army lawyer. He saw some bad shit in Afghanistan, leaked evidence of potential war crimes to the ABC, and is now facing life in prison for that act. Let me be clear, the government that launched the prosecution of McBride wasn't Labor. It was back when alleged rapist turned lawyer for the mob Christian Porter was Attorney General. But this video is me questioning why the hell are Labor keeping this prosecution, to quote the guy on my t-shirt, roll and roll and roll and roll again! Yeah! As well as McBride, Christian Porter was also responsible for launching the prosecution of lawyer Bernard Caleri, whose great crime was acting as a lawyer for his client Witness K, a former ACES agent that blew the whistle on an illegal bugging operation the Howard government undertook against Australia's desperately poor neighbour East Timor in order to pretty much scam them in negotiations over who gets the oil. Sorry, I know that's a lot of evil to take in at once. Thankfully, Labor won the election last year and Australia got a new Attorney General and double thankfully, unlike Porter, this time it wasn't an AG that both looked and acted like Andrew Tate was his top advisor. Why don't we change the name of AG to Top G to better reflect my place in the land of force? So sad. Yet another top G taken down by the Matrix. The new Attorney General is Mark Dreyfus, and look at this low value man. I bet he doesn't even have one brigade. Dreyfus has done a lot of good stuff in office very quickly. One of them was to drop the prosecution of Caleri, previously stating that the prosecution wasn't in the public interest and was, quote, 
an affront to the rule of law, which is undoubtedly true, but it does beg the question, why hasn't Dreyfus dropped the charges against David McBride yet? It takes only an extremely rudimentary understanding of the government's case against McBride to know that the prosecution also isn't in the public interest and is an affront to the rule of law. Yet far from dropping the prosecutions, the government has taken recent actions that Porter would be proud of. In October last year, McBride was said to go to court to mount his defence under the Public Interest Disclosures Act. This is an act brought in by Mark Dreyfus back in 2013, when he was the Attorney General under the previous Labor government. It was designed to give protections to whistleblowers to prevent political prosecutions just like McBride's. Ironically, this is an act that Dreyfus himself has admitted is deficient in protecting whistleblowers, and to his credit, Dreyfus is set to reform it. Anyway, McBride attempts to mount his defence, which is already modest. The government is greatly limiting what he can present in court, so really it just consisted of two witnesses. And at the very last minute, the government makes an extremely cynical move to deprive McBride of his two witnesses under public interest immunity laws. Laws which prevent evidence from being admitted if it is not in the public interest to do so, i.e. it damages national security. The only problem with that is that the judges of what is in the public interest and what is not in the public interest are not judges, it's the government. The same spooks that are attempting to put McBride in prison. I guess this shirt is quite apt because there are quite a few parallels between Fred Durst's philosophy and the Australian government's. One, they keep that shit rolling, and generally, it's my way, my way or the highway. So thanks to, and I do hate to say it, people working for the Albanese government, McBride was forced to abandon his defense. Think about that. Imagine if these public interest immunity laws were extended further. Can you imagine if you were accused of murder and you had two alibis and the prosecution at the last minute gets to decide, no, we're not letting you have those alibis to appear as witnesses. And the judge has no say in that whatsoever. To quote McBride's lawyer, Mark Davis, as we walked towards the court, we had two legs and two arms and every step we got closer, one of those was chopped off. Forget the absurdity of McBride being forced to defend himself using laws that his own prosecutor think are unfair to force McBride to prepare for this defense for literally years and then at the very last minute deprive him of his evidence. That is not the move of a model litigant. That is something a dodgy used car salesman would try in a civil suit. There's something deeply strange in the way the government is exercising its power. But unlike the Morrison government, it's pretty clear that the Albanese government isn't overtly keen on these prosecutions. So why is this Porter era prosecution being continued on by Dreyfus? It's definitely not because the material McBride leaked was damaging to national security. Security, most of the material is so damaging to national security that it's still up on the ABC's website. For context, my video detailing allegations that the ex-defence minister was bringing male prostitutes to the Parliament House prayer room was taken down within a matter of days. Another video of mine about the ex-Deputy Premier of New South Wales, John Barillaro's email and personal details being connected to an Ashley Madison account with the username John Loves to Lick was also tragically taken down. I've had countless videos removed at the whim of government officials. McBride leaked information apparently so damaging to national security that he faces life in prison to be determined by trials so secret that he's been barred from presenting evidence or calling witnesses that might help his case. Yet most of the material leaked is still up online. If the government was genuinely worried about national security implications of what McBride leaked, surely the first thing they do instead of raiding the ABC and prosecuting a whistleblower is get that shit offline. But it's still up. Just for fun, let's read some of it. The Afghan files. <sighs> Hundreds of pages of secret defense force documents leaked to so boring. Let's just read this instead. Queensland becomes last state to ban unrestrained dogs traveling in huge and trailer trash. It's about time. Just so you know, we were at McBride's trial. You can watch the video here. There was not a single ABC journalist there. How scummy is that? They are the biggest benefactors of it, and yet they still won't cover it. Cowards. But this is where you realize McBride's prosecution is not about national security. Finding the purpose in the prosecution is harder than you think. In fact, much like the Eminem rebrand, the prosecution is a big pile of shit that no one wants to eat. There's a confusing duality to McBride's prosecution now that Labor's in and it's continuing. On the one hand, you have all this noble rhetoric about reforming the culture that led to the atrocities being committed in Afghanistan. You have the Brereton inquiry that came in the wake of McBride's allegations that all but confirmed war crimes were committed by Australian special forces in Afghanistan. You have the defense chief ordering Afghan veterans to explain why they should keep their medals in the wake of that inquiry. You have the defense minister, Richard Miles, backing that decision. You have the government looking to pay compensation to victims of Australian war crimes, yet you have no prosecutions of the alleged war criminal. 
Americans. But the one man who served his country, not behind a desk, unlike the people trying to put him in prison, but behind a gun, a man who's actually been shot, a man whose actions have undoubtedly saved lives by shining a light on those who unjustly take them, is the one that's gonna face the consequences. I was in the courtroom when McBride was forced to drop his defenses because of the government objecting to his witnesses. When flagging their intention to drop their defense, McBride's barrister, Brett Walker SC, mentioned that the material the government prevented from being presented in court concerned foreign partners. And this is where I think the impetus to prosecute comes from. This has a stink of foreign interference, a stink of the Americans all over it. To me, it really feels like there is an engine pushing this prosecution forward that is far more powerful than the Australian government. And that is scary. As we know with Assange, the Americans are extremely zealous when it comes to plugging military leaks even in the outer regions of their empire. And we also know that Mark Dreyfus and Anthony Albanese are principal men who have a very good past record on whistleblowers. And for that matter, foreign military interventions. Something very strange is going on. It's pretty clear from their public posturing on this case, namely the lack of it, that the Albanese government and Mark Dreyfus want as much distance between them and the prosecution as possible. Hell, I bet even the barristers working to put McBride in prison have trouble sleeping. Well, at least they should. If they don't, I've got a suggestion for you guys. Maybe before bed, you should watch some of the videos of the war crimes committed by Australians against unarmed Afghans and think, yeah, that's who I want to get up in the morning to protect. Putting a war hero in prison for reporting heinous war crimes that everyone now accepts happened and are wrong, that's something no one wants to take responsibility for. But for some reason, the prosecution is still taking place. In the end, if David McBride is separated from his family and thrown in prison for doing the right thing, Mark Dreyfus and others in the Labor Party are unfortunately gonna have to sleep with that fact that they finished what Porter started. So come on, Labor, don't give the top G yet another win. Other than that, you're doing a bang-up job. Ban single-use plastics. <laughs> <laughs>